subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon, to never miss a video from us. Hi, welcome to Test Prep Training. Today we will discuss about, Microsoft Azure Architect Design AZ301 Exam. Microsoft AZ301 just like any other Azure role-based exams follows a similar structure. And, since this examination is in association with AZ300, you must already have prior experience about exam policies, pattern, scoring, and related aspects. However, one must be thorough with each, and every exam detail as each exam has different objectives. Intended Audience Candidates for this examination are Azure Solution Architects who guide stakeholders, and translate business requirements into safe, scalable, and reliable solutions. Now, we will talk about Recommended Knowledge Candidates must have exceptional knowledge and expertise across various aspects of IT operations. These include First, Networking Second, Virtualization Third, Identity Fourth, Security Fifth, Business Continuity Sixth, Disaster Recovery Seventh, Data Management Eighth, Budgeting Ninth, Governance Basic Exam Details AZ301 Exam The Microsoft AZ301 Exam is 150 minutes long. Though the examination comprises 40 to 60 questions as the number of questions keep on changing over time. Speaking of which, the candidate may encounter multiple choice and multi-response questions. However, there are no prerequisites. And, as far as the language of the exam is concerned, the exam is only available in only four languages. Further, these include English, Japanese, Chinese, Korean. Exam Pricing the registration fee for the AZ301 exam is 165 US dollars, without taxes, may vary from country to country you can be eligible for reduced pricing. First, if you're a Microsoft Partner Network Program members. Second, if you submit your valid educational credentials. Exam Result AZ301 results will be declared within a few minutes, after the end of the examination. Printed report card will be mailed to you within 5 business days. This report will include every detail of your examination such as First, pass or fail status Second, performance in different skill areas in the exam Third, overall performance Now we will discuss about how to schedule the exam The Microsoft Azure Architects Design AZ301 exam has been built to measure your ability to understand the basic of cloud concepts, understanding core Azure services, security, privacy, compliance, and trust as well as Azure pricing, and support. For non-students interested in technology, schedule with Pearson VUE. For students or instructors, schedule with CertiPort. Course Outline, AZ301 Exam First, determine workload requirements, which comprises 10-15% to weightage for this exam. Second, design for identity and security, which comprises 20-25% to weightage for this exam. Third, Design a data platform solution, which compromises 15 to 20% weightage for this exam. Fourth, design a business continuity strategy, which compromises 10 to 15% weightage for this exam. Fifth, design for deployment, migration, and integration, which compromises 10 to 15% weightage for this exam. Sixth, design an infrastructure strategy, which compromises 15 to 20% weightage for this exam. Domain 1, Determine Workload Requirements, 10-15% to Number 1, Gathering Information, and Requirements It contains 9 subtopics which are First, Identify Compliance Requirements Second, Identify Identity and Access Management Infrastructure Third, Identify Service-Oriented Architectures Fourth, Identify Accessibility Requirements Fifth, Identify Availability Requirements Sixth, identify capacity planning and scalability requirements. Seventh, identify deployability requirements. Eighth, identify configurability. Ninth, identify governance requirements. Number two, optimizing consumption strategy. It contains five subtopics which are First, optimize app service costs. Second, optimize compute costs. Third, optimize identity costs. Fourth, optimize network costs. Fifth, optimize storage costs. Number three, designing an auditing and monitoring strategy. It contains seven subtopics which are First, 
define logical groupings for resources to be monitored. Second, determine levels and storage locations for logs. Third, plan for integration with monitoring tools. Fourth, recommend appropriate monitoring tools for a solution. Fifth, specify the mechanism for event routing and escalation. Sixth, design auditing for compliance requirements. Seventh, design auditing policies and traceability requirements. Domain 2, design for identity and security, 20 to 25%. Number 1, designing identity management. It contains seven subtopics which are First, choose an identity management approach. Second, design an identity delegation strategy. Third, design an identity repository. Fourth, design self-service identity management. Fifth, define personas. Sixth, define roles. Seventh, recommend appropriate access control strategy. Number two, designing authentication. It contains seven subtopics which are First, choose an authentication approach. Second, design a single sign-on approach. Third, design for IPsec authentication. Fourth, design for login authentication. Fifth, design for multi-factor authentication. Sixth, design for network access authentication. Seventh, design for remote authentication. Number three, designing authorization. It contains four subtopics which are First, choose an authorization approach. Second, define access permissions and privileges. Third, design secure delegated access. Fourth, recommend when and how to use API keys. Number four, designing for risk prevention for identity. It contains four subtopics which are First, design a risk assessment strategy. Second, evaluate agreements involving services or products from vendors and contractors. Third, update solution design to address and mitigate changes to existing security policies. Fourth, standards, guidelines, and procedures. Number five, designing a monitoring strategy for identity and security. It contains three subtopics which are First, design for alert notifications. Second, design an alert and metrics strategy. Third, recommend authentication monitors. Domain three, design a data platform solution, 15 to 20%. Number one, designing a data management strategy. It contains 11 subtopics which are First, choose between managed and unmanaged data store. Second, choose between relational and non-relational databases. Third, design a data auditing strategy. Fourth, design a data caching strategy. Fifth, identify data attributes. Sixth, recommend database service deer sizing. Seventh, design a data retention policy. Eighth, design for data availability. Ninth, design for data consistency. Tenth, design for data durability. Eleventh, design a data warehouse strategy. Number two, designing a data protection strategy. It contains seven subtopics which are First, recommend geographic data storage Second, design an encryption strategy for data at rest Third, design an encryption strategy for data in transmission Fourth, design an encryption strategy for data in use Fifth, design a scalability strategy for data Sixth, design secure access to data Seventh, design a data loss prevention policy Number three designing and documenting data flows it contains five subtopics which are first identify data flow requirements second create a data flow diagram third design a data flow to meet business requirements fourth design data flow solutions fifth design a data import and export strategy number four designing a monitoring strategy for the data platform it contains three subtopics which are First, design for alert notifications. Second, design an alert and metrics strategy. Third, monitor Azure Data Factory pipelines. Domain four, design a business continuity strategy, 10 to 15%. Number one, designing a site recovery strategy. It contains 10 subtopics which are, first, design a recovery solution. Second, design a site recovery replication policy. Third, design for site recovery capacity. 
Fourth, design for storage replication. Fifth, design site failover and failback. Sixth, design the site recovery network. Seventh, recommend recovery objectives, Azure, on-prem, hybrid, recovery time objective, recovery level objective, recovery point objective. Eighth, identify resources that require site recovery. Ninth, identify supported and unsupported workloads. Tenth, recommend a geographical distribution strategy. Number two, designing for high availability. It contains 11 subtopics which are First, design for application redundancy Second, design for auto-scaling Third, design for data center and fault domain redundancy Fourth, design for network redundancy Fifth, identify resources that require high availability Sixth, identify storage types for high availability Seventh, design a disaster recovery strategy for individual workloads Eighth, design failover or failback scenarios. 9th, document recovery requirements. 10th, identify resources that require backup. 11th, recommend a geographic availability strategy. Number 3, designing a data archiving strategy. It contains four subtopics which are First, recommend storage types and methodology for data archiving. Second, identify business compliance requirements for data archiving. Third, identify requirements for data archiving. Fourth, identify SLAs for data archiving. Domain 5, design for deployment, migration, and integration, 10 to 15%. Number 1, designing deployments. It contains six subtopics which are First, design a compute deployment strategy. Second, design a container deployment strategy. Third, design a data platform deployment strategy. Fourth, Design a messaging solution deployment strategy. Fifth, design a storage deployment strategy. Sixth, design a web app and service deployment strategy. Number two, designing migrations. It contains seven subtopics which are First, recommend a migration strategy. Second, design data import or export strategies during migration. Third, determine the appropriate application migration method. Fourth, Determine the appropriate data transfer method. Fifth, determine the appropriate network connectivity method. Sixth, determine migration scope, including redundant, related, trivial, and outdated data. Seventh, determine application and data compatibility. Number three, designing an API integration strategy. It contains three subtopics which are First, design an API gateway strategy. Second, Determine policies for internal and external consumption of APIs. Third, recommend a hosting structure for API management. Domain 6, design an infrastructure strategy, 15 to 20 percent. Number 1, designing a storage strategy. It contains five subtopics which are First, design a storage provisioning strategy. Second, design storage access strategy. Third, identify storage requirements. Fourth, recommend a storage solution. Fifth, recommend storage management tools. Number two, designing a computing strategy. It contains six subtopics which are First, design a compute provisioning strategy. Second, design a secure compute strategy. Third, determine appropriate compute technologies. Fourth, design an Azure HPC environment. Fifth, identify compute requirements. Sixth, Recommend management tools for computing. Number 3, designing a networking strategy. It contains six subtopics which are First, design a network provisioning strategy. Second, design a network security strategy. Third, determine appropriate network connectivity technologies. Fourth, identify networking requirements. Fifth, recommend network management tools. Sixth, recommend network security solutions. Number 4, designing a monitoring strategy for infrastructure. It contains two subtopics which are First, design for alert notifications. Second, design an alert and metrics strategy. Now, we will talk about exam policies. First, while preparing for Microsoft Azure Architect Design AZ301 exam you will be solely responsible for 1. 
understanding and complying with Microsoft certification exam policies. 2. Together with the specified exam delivery provider's policies and procedures. Second, you can go through the exam retake policy together with other Microsoft exam available and exam testing procedures. Third, the exam policy page provides details of the exam provider's policies and procedures together with the exam provider's details. Fourth, note, you will have 30 days after taking an exam to challenge your exam score for that exam. Master Study Guide for AZ301 Certification exam may seem scary but with right learning resources, one can qualify the AZ301 exam in the very first attempt. But, before we begin with the preparatory guide, one must keep in mind that there is no single strategy for all. However, there's something called the systematic approach. Therefore, in this section, we're going to provide a ladder, you must walk through in the same order as mentioned below. Review all the exam objectives. Your first step in the preparation guide is to review all the exam objectives. And, to do so, make sure to visit the official website of Microsoft AZ301 exam. As this is the most authentic site for obvious reasons. By doing so, you'll have a clear view of each and every information related to the AZ301 exam. So, make sure to begin with this step. Now we will discuss about download exam skill outline. You must now download the exam skill outline available on the official website itself. Downloading the outline will provide you with the updated exam outline. All the domains and their subtopics are listed down in the outline. Keep in mind not to rely on any other website except the official website itself. Since the exam is updated after every few years, hence the official website is your door to reliable information. Microsoft Instructor-Led Training, the gold standard of learning. These are paid online classes offered by Microsoft itself. For AZ301 exam, Microsoft has formulated four different courses. Course AZ301 T01A, Designing for Identity and Security. In this course, you'll learn to manage security and identity. Also, you'll get to know multiple software as a service features available in Azure. Course AZ301 TO2A, Designing a Data Platform Solution. The second one will allow you to have a clearer view to compare and contrast various database options on Azure. Not to mention, you'll be able to identify data streaming options for large-scale data ingest and longer-term data storage options. Course AZ301 TO3A, Designing for deployment, migration, and integration. Further, here you'll learn to easily deploy an Azure Resource Manager template to a resource group, and much more. Course AZ301 TO4A, Designing an Infrastructure Strategy. Lastly, you'll learn to outline DNS and IP strategies for VNETs in Azure. Fuel your passion with books. Books have always been a part of human life. From the very beginning, books have been an integral part of human life. Here is a list of books that we highly suggest. First, Exam AZ300 and AZ301 Study and Lab Guide Part 1 and Part 2, Microsoft Certified Azure Solutions Architect Expert by Harinder Kohli. Second, Microsoft AZ301 Exam Preparation by Giorgio Dacchi. Third, Azure Solutions Architect Study Guide by Benjamin Perkins. Now, we will talk about, join a community. Online forums and study groups are a great way to prepare for the AZ301 exam. Therefore, feel free to get in touch with other candidates through study forums or online groups to ask questions related to the topic you're having difficulty with. These online groups help you stay equated with the other people who are also walking through the same path as yours. Moreover, you can also ask a question related to the topic you're having difficulty with. Mock tests are a must. One must be thorough with each and every exam detail as each exam has different objectives. It will help you solidify your knowledge in Azure exams. Take it from us, self-evaluation is the only step you need in the end. The more you're going to practice, it's better for you. There may be many hidden rocks in an exam, and you can only confront them with the help of practice sets. So, go through as many practice tests as much as you can. After going through the learning resources, you'll realize that learning resources play a huge factor in the preparation. But, the way you study, and how much hours you dedicate also are essentials factors to contribute. For more such videos, subscribe to our channel.